This video is about intermuscular spaces that are present in the scapular region. So first I'll consider the boundaries and the contents of the three spaces which are present in this region and they are the quadrangular space, upper triangular space, lower triangular space. And after that I'll talk about quadrangular space syndrome, what exactly it is, what are the possible causes and what are the symptoms. And finally about the triangle of auscultation and its clinical significance. Now in this picture we can see here or diagram I should say we can see the three spaces. This is the quadrangular space as the name suggests obviously it will have four boundaries and this is present where it is present superiorly. Where exactly these spaces are present? Actually they are present on the lateral aspect of the scapular region very close to axilla. So this is the quadrangular space this is present superiorly. Then we have the upper triangular space, so it will have three boundaries and this is located superior medially. And then inferior laterally we have another triangular space and this is known as lower triangular space. Now the structures which will be forming boundaries, they will be because these spaces are present between the lateral border of the scapula and the upper part of the shaft of the humerus right which will include the surgical neck and the upper part of shaft of humerus so right so they will be present between these now the lateral spaces will obviously be bounded by the humerus the upper space will be bounded laterally by the surgical neck of the humerus and the lower one will be bounded by the shaft of the humerus when we go to the medial aspect there the scapula itself is not going to bound any space right but the muscles which will be taking origin from the lateral border they will be forming the boundaries and the two muscles which take origin from lateral border of scapula they are teres minor and teres major right so here we can see this is the teres minor muscle and this is the teres major muscle the third muscle which will be involved in forming boundaries of these spaces that will be the triceps which will take origin from infraglenoid tubercle. So now it, the way to remember is there are three muscles which will be involved in forming the boundaries of these spaces, three spaces and these are the muscles which will take origin from the lateral border of the scapula and the muscle taking origin from a bony prominence at the upper end of the lateral border of the scapula which is known as infraglenoid tubercle. So which are these three muscles? These three muscles are teres minor, teres major and the triceps right. So what will be the contents of these? The important contents will be the either nerve and blood, blood vessels or simply the blood vessels right. So these will be the contents of this. Now why it becomes important? This becomes important because knowledge of, of this region is important when surgeries are performed there so that the structures which are passing through these spaces they are not injured. Let us start with the quadrangular space. So here we can see this is the quadrangular space with four boundaries. Let us look at the boundaries. Now superiorly the boundaries. Superiorly the boundary will be now uh, these spaces actually they can be how do you see you see them from the posterior aspect right and when will you see these spaces when the deltoid the posterior fibers of the deltoid they are reflected or they are removed only then these spaces will become visible. So superior boundary will be formed by teres minor. Remember the teres minor has to be above. Vaise bhi chota jo hoga wo hamesha upar hota hai. Teres major will be below. And anterior to the teres major will be the capsule of shoulder joint and still anterior to that would be the subscapularis muscle. So the upper boundary of quadrangular space will be formed by three structures. These will be from posterior to anterior, teres minor, capsule of shoulder joint and the third will be subscapularis muscle. Let us look at the inferior boundary. Inferior boundary will be formed by teres major. Right, so this is forming the inferior boundary, and because this is superior laterally present, so this will come close to the humerus. So, which part of the humerus will form its lateral boundary? That will be the surgical neck of the humerus. And medially, now which muscle will be there? That will be the long head of 
triceps. So these are the four boundaries of the quadrilateral space. What are the contents or what are the structures which pass through that? These will be those structures which come in relation to surgical neck of the humerus. And which are those two structures? Axillary nerve and posterior circumflex humeral vessels. So this is about the quadrangular space. Now let us talk about the quadrangular space syndrome. So what is this quadrangular space syndrome or QSS? This is actually uh, quite a rare condition. So what happens in this is that the axillary nerve and the posterior humeral circumflex artery way or vein, they might get compressed in the quadrangular space. So what could be the possible causes? Uh, most common of them is uh, presence of the fibrous band which is seen between the teres muscles and the triceps muscles. So those fibrous bands and they become actually stretched when the person is doing abduction and lateral rotation. So they might impinge on or compress upon the axillary nerve and the posterior circumflex humeral vessels. Second could be uh, trauma, scapular fracture could be there, Sur fracture of surgical neck of humerus could be there and muscular hypertrophy. Sometimes these muscles, the triceps and the teres major, they may uh, get hypertrophy and that can also be one of the reason for compression of these nerves. So what will be the symptoms? The main symptoms we will consider about the compression of the axillary nerve. So axillary nerve supplies two muscles and these are the teres minor and the deltoid muscles. So there can be atrophy or weakness of teres major, I'm sorry, minor and deltoid muscle. Plus there can be uh, paresthesia, tingling sensation, right? That kind of uh, abnormal sensations will can be there in the area of distribution of axillary nerve, right? So that area is the one which overlies the deltoid muscle that is in the lateral and posterior shoulder regions, right? So these will be the symptoms due to compression of the axillary nerve. Let us look at the upper triangular space. Now here, this is superior medially present. When we say medially, it is close to scapula. So three muscles are forming its boundaries. Upper boundary, obviously teres minor is above, so teres minor. Lower boundary, teres major, like the quadrangular space, right? And these two spaces are separated by the long head of triceps, which forms medial boundary of quadrangular space, but lateral boundary of the upper triangular space. Which important structure passes through this? The important structure which passes through this is the circumflex scapular uh, artery. I think it is wrongly written here, circumflex scapular artery. That is circumflex scapular artery will pass through that. And why? what is the importance of this artery? This artery is going to participate in the formation of anastomosis around the scapula. And this anastomosis we will consider in another video is between the branches of first part of subclavian artery and third part of axillary artery. This circumflex scapular artery is a branch of subscapular artery, which is a branch of third part of axillary artery, right? So we'll have arteries coming here, suprascapular, transverse cervical, which will be coming from thyrocervical trunk, which is a branch of first part of subclavian artery, right? So what is the significance of this anastomosis? Is if there is any block, between the first part of the uh, subclavian artery and third part of the axillary artery, the blood can circulate via this anastomosis. So this structure, that's why gains significance, right? So this is upper triangular space above the boundaries by teres minor, below teres major, laterally by the uh, long head of triceps, the structure which passed through that circumflex scapular vessels. Now coming to the lower triangular space, right? Lower triangular space, we can see that is inferolateral, again close to humerus, right? So here the superior boundary, because it is inferolateral, so superior boundary will be formed by teres major. Now teres minor is gone. And then its lateral boundary will be formed by shaft of humerus, whereas the medial boundary will be same as that of the quadrangular space, that is the long head of triceps. What passes through that? Radial nerve and profunda brachii vessels. So these are very important structures. Again, 
this is also known as triangular space syndrome or triangular syndrome. Uh, what happens here is again fibrous band could be there or they can be fracture of the shaft of humerus here which can lead to injury to the radial nerve and we know that what happens because of that the wrist drop may have happen because of that. So this is the significance of knowing these three spaces. Let us now look at the triangle of auscultation. In this uh, picture you can see here a small triangle with green outline. This is the triangle of auscultation. Let us look at its boundary. Now its boundaries will be formed by two huge muscles which are present in the posterior aspect of the trunk. So which are those two biggest largest muscles on the posterior aspect of trunk? One is trapezius above and the latissimus dorsi below. So that way you can remember which bone is present on the dorsal aspect of the trunk that is scapula. So these are the three structures which are going to form the boundaries trapezius, lattice trapezius, latissimus dorsi and the scapula. Let us look at the boundaries now. Let us see the medial boundary. Medial boundary is formed by the lateral border of the trapezius and laterally it will be formed by the medial border of the scapula. Right? Whereas the inferior boundary will be formed by the upper border of latissimus dorsi. So this is the triangle of auscultation. Now what is the clinical significance? Respiratory sounds of the inferior lobe of lung, they can be heard clearly here. And why they can be heard clearly? Because no large muscle, right? that covers this area except for those intercostal spaces no other muscle is covering this area so that's why the respiratory sounds can be heard very well here in this triangle of auscultation thank you so much for watching and please subscribe if you have not subscribed my channel so that i can put more such videos thanks one again once again